Hey, K Publishing, the Plug Magazine. I'm Log G. Here with us, we got Yago Kane. It's your boy Kane. What's up, Bato? What you doing? Pues aquí nomás, chilling with you. Coming in here with a good crew, get a little interview in, man. Happen to be in Houston, my home away from home. It's always good to see my people out here, you know, get chopping up with y'all, get chopping up with these topics we're about to discuss and get this on the road, bro. Let's do this. Hell yeah, bet, bet, man. So, first off, let's start up with who are you, man? Yago Kane, that's kind of a weird spelling. It is, bro. You have no idea how many times I have to tell people to say it right, bro. I've actually, you know, taken it upon myself to write a track explaining how you say my name, what my name is, the reasoning behind my name. And it's curious because you see, there's two parts of it. There's first Yago. Now, my family, all on my mom's side and on my dad's side, uh, my Mexican family and my American family as well, they would all call me Yaguito as a kid. They would call me Yago. It's like uh, the second part of Santiago, which is my full name. So you got people calling me Santi, and then you got people calling me Yago. But Yago was always from my family. So that's why I felt it was important um, as I was rebranding, changing from my last project to the one that I'm currently representing here in Texas, to be able to use the name Yago because it was something more true to my heart and more what I'm trying to represent in this new endeavor. Bet, bet, bet. So you mentioned Mexican family, American family. Are you mixed? What is that? Hey, pues, Simon, pues, you could see it like that. I was born in Mexico City, and uh, I moved up to Vermont when I was four, up in the north, Estem. But then my parents had split, and I went. I came to San Antonio, where I grew up, and you know, I stayed there till I was sixteen, because that's where my uh, quote unquote American family, which is really just on my on my maternal grandmother's side, that's where they were staying at. So you know, it was kind of a little point of contact that my mom had, so she could take me and my little brother over to a place where we could be stable, where we could be a little bit chill after my parents had split. And you know, I mean, you know what happens with most divorces, right? Like people go half half and half, people go their separate ways and you just gotta make ends meet the way you can. And you know, in San Antonio, we have family, so that's where we hit it up. So I guess I can say que si soy de ahí, soy de acá, cause I have dual citizenship as well, which is a huge advantage. I'm very thankful. I'm very, very, very thankful to be able to have that because I can just come and go as I please which is a huge advantage as far as to what my vision is with the record company that I own, Kane Mafia Conglomerate, and with what I want to pursue and do as an artist. Man, man, that's crazy, man. You have dual citizenship? Simone. That's crazy. So when you said your American family is, are you saying you're half white? Pues, hell, look at these fucking green eyes, bro. Hell yeah, bro. I'll be whiter than the fucking... Well, no, this wall's black, but I'll be... Man, you put me against a white wall, I'm gonna get lost, bro. <laughs> Pero pues, Simón, pues como dicen en Mexico, pues soy güerito. No, pues I gotta accept also my Irish roots. I, I adore them. I love them. You know, just as much as I love my Mexican side, it's good to be able to represent both sides, kind of be able to have input from both communities, be able to, you know, absorb both different kinds of cultures and just exploit them in the in the most convenient way, the most efficient way, and the realest way possible, you know what I'm saying? I can never deny where I come from, who I truly am, because it makes what my music is, you know, it makes it be what it is, and it makes me who I am as a person and defines me. That's dope, man, that's crazy. So like, I've listened to a couple of your songs. What I notice in your music is that you come through always with some dope visuals. I appreciate that, thank you, bro. How do you manage to create all these ideas? Where do they come from? Um, I direct all my videos. I, I, you know, I've always been a very visual person. I really like um, the ideas that I have cooking up in my head. You know, like whenever I make a track, I automatically think, what would this look like visually? What is this gonna look like on the screen, not just in people's ears? How, is pe how are people gonna be able to relate to this track specifically and how am I visually gonna present that? Thankfully, 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 I have a very good team of people, um, both here in the States and back home in Mexico, that help me bring these visual concepts to life and help me be able to, you know, just uh, give life to these projects and bring them to the screen. Cool, man. Like, 
Who is it? Who have you collaborated with? These type of people that help you with the visuals. Well, see, I started in rap really formally in Mexico. So the majority of the people that I hold it down with currently are people in Mexico. I have to give a shout out and send mad love to my boy Dufre out of Dufre Pro Studio. He's been holding it down with me for the past. Um, if I'm not mistaken around, it's probably been around five, almost six years that we've been working together. And what I really appreciate about him is that the work that we have together has always been, you know, on, on a very positive, on a very positive, um, tangent in the sense that we're just always trying to perfect our crafts. There's always room for improvement. There's always room for you to grow as an individual, grow as an artist. And we've been pushing that line. You know what I'm saying? So that's something that not only helps me as an artist, but as a person as well, besides the fact that he's also one of my boys. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we, we can get to work, we get our work done, we chop it up, we have a couple of beers when I used to drink. And, um, you know, there were times when we'd run out and go do some other shit over there. But, uh, but you know, basically we kept it with music and all that kind of stuff. And it was just a blessing to have him in my life. So he's basically, I guess within K Mafia conglomerate, I could say that he's the man who is in charge of all the um, design, the visuals. I wouldn't say specifically the visuals because I'm gonna be working with a lot of other people here in San Antonio, that, uh, I'm sorry, here in Texas in general that I've been meeting. And, um, but he definitely takes care of the design, edits all my photos, you know, helps me out making like the videos that I'm gonna be posting as far as Instagram stories, uh, stuff for TikTok, stuff for Twitter, whatever, and all that kind of stuff. Orale, orale. So like, man, you mentioned Mexico City, shout out to the Big M, shout out to your people out there in Vermont. Hell yeah. But how did you end up in San Antonio? Pues, it was easy. I mean, like when my parents divorced, like I said, uh, my grandma was, was living in San Antonio. And for my mom, it was just a, a point of contact, you know, <clears throat> shout out to my mom. God bless my mom. She always wanted the best for us. You know what I'm saying? She always wanted to to uh, be able to provide, um, you know, we, we didn't really have much, but with what we had, she was trying to do the best for us to be in a good situation. So San Antonio was kind of the option because my grandma was here. She has already, uh, she had already been familiarized with San Antonio, with living in San Antonio, the schools in San Antonio, etc. So, you know, shouts out to her for, for doing the best, best job possible to have us in a, in a, in a, in a good, safe space up until, you know, Motherfucker turn, you know, motherfucker start hitting puberty and start getting a little bit crazy with some shit. And then I kind of just went off on my own little path. But up until then, you know, you know, it was all her. It was all her blessings. And I'm, I'm forever thankful for that. Good deal. Shout out to your mom, man. I know that a lot of our readers are going to uh, appreciate the kind words because a lot of people, what they miss are the little things, especially the family. And when it turns out sometimes, uh, when you go in there, all your friends and everybody just leave you, but your mom usually stays or your dad or et cetera. It's always somebody related that uh, stays around, helps you out. 100%. Cool, man. Uh, that brings me to my last topic, something that you had <coughs> mentioned when we were last speaking. I uh, heard you like to freestyle. Oh, yeah. Is that something you do for fun or do you apply it or do you go out there and battle people? Um, I'm gonna be real with you. I'm actually not not that big of a fan of battling because I mean look, I'm not a motherfucking saint and I will never say that I am. But I don't feel I just I don't like talking shit to people. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like like how am I gonna like like it's cause it's funny because from where I come from in Mexico, the um the battling scene is something that's very prominent and it's something that a lot of younger MCs and developing artists are very attracted to just because of the uh, impact that it's had in Latin America as a whole, um, you know, kind of branching out from Mexico, but also because of the, I guess, the doors that it opens for these MCs, because in Mexico is very curious. You will see that they put more of an emphasis on battle rap and on battling than they will actually put on people putting out, you know, albums, putting out like full projects and all that kind of stuff, which is starting to get more developed. But when I was kind of coming up in the scene over there, it just really wasn't the uh, the focus on it. So yeah, and you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I mean, that's a whole nother topic. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole nother topic, the whole clout chasing kind of shit. I mean, like at the end of the day, bro, like how am I going to stand up in front of a person who I don't know and start saying some petty shit and talking about their mother, talking about their sister, 
talking about them, talking about X or Y, which is proven what these motherfuckers are supposedly proven to be the biggest, you know, see, let's see who has the biggest dick up out here, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't fuck with that shit. I'm a musician, bro. I, I just try to make music that makes me happy, that hopefully someone out there is going to be able to sit down, listen to, and maybe find something relatable. And through that music, be inspired to become a better version of themselves, you know what I'm saying? Because it's, it, like, it's like Nipsey said, it's a marathon. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, you know, this marathon is what's going to develop us into not just into the artists, but into the human beings that we are destined to become. Damn, boy, getting deep. Always. Already. Yago Kane, what's your latest track you dropped? Hey, we uh, released a track called Conquer not too long ago, but I do want to put emphasis on the following. May 30th, we're going to be dropping a new track called Bout It. This track was produced by the homeboy Petch Beef out in Mexico City. Shouts out to Petch Beef, main producer that I'll be working with who's still out there. And um, the track goes hard. We're preparing some visuals for it as well. We're going to start filming probably here within the next week, week and a half. It's going to come with my boy Freddie Smith, Freddie Tejeda Smith. A uh, very good photographer from Louisiana. Um, also, you know, one of my close homeboys just because uh, he's Honduran. So we were able to make that connection when we st we both started working at this workplace. You know, it was it was just curious because, you know, we both speak Spanish. And um, and that's kind of what made us get connected regarding that. He's going to be dropping some visuals for that. And, you know, about is going to come hard, man. I really fuck with the track. I think the track's great. Um, I hope that people vibe with it. I hope that people can, you know, learn a little something from it and just blast it and put it on jam. All right, everybody make sure to take a look at about it. Check out that boy, Yago Kane, he dropped Conquer, AKM Publishing, this is The Plug Magazine. I'm Log G, let them know if you want to send any shout outs or anything else you got to say. Hell yeah. First of all, thank y'all very much for having me here. It's a, it's a true honor, it's an honor to be able to come chop it up with y'all and uh, to be here in the same space. Also with some artists that I'm getting to know. Smooth, I already know my boy Smooth. Shout out to my boy Smooth. Shout out to my new boy Red, man. It's good to be here with y'all. And um, one thing I will say is never forget who you're looking at when you're looking in the mirror, who's on the outside, and never ever leave who's on the inside behind. Hold their hand and keep pushing forward. Because like Nipsey said, it's a marathon and we in it to win it. You know what I'm saying? And when you win it, bless those around you. Bless those around you, and those blessings will come back to you. And if you don't, you know you left this world blessing others. Big Bear, appreciate your time. The Plug Magazine, I'm Log G, Yago Kane. Hustle all year, ain't no day off. 25, eight, ain't no day off. Hustle all year,